Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Augustus, and I'm back again with another episode of Tsukihime. And when we last left off, well, Shiki had an end, but I can't... I can't bring myself to call it a bad end. Um, but we're at the choice where we left off. Things are a little bit different. I have set things up so that we will be hitting, well, the next bad end. Um, and in this... Uh, little run through here and then I can reload from from a previous save and continue on like normal so let's wait 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 it's now 11 o'clock the park is completely still as if frozen as if entirely frozen there's no fresh flow of air, nor the presence of anyone approaching. There's no sign of Arcoid coming. Time passes by meaninglessly. I continue to wait. Wait, wait, wait. Both hands on the clock are approached the top of the dial. It's been two hours since I came here, yet there's no sign of Arcoid. I still wait. Like I said, wait, wait, wait. The clock's hand points to 12. It's two hours past the promised time. Woo. I slouch on the bench and sigh. She might not come after all. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't feel like going back. Yeah, I'll wait until the morning. Damn it. I lie on the bench in frustration. And then... Huh? Wait a minute. I think I saw a flash of white behind the rest area. Besides, it moves back as soon as I saw it. I stand up from the bench and stride towards the rest area. As if it knew it couldn't hide anymore, the white figure shows its face. <laughs> you found me. Arcoid appears more cheerfully than ever. Arcoid, you... Hmm? What? You really came. I blurt that out because I still can't believe it. Of course, we promised. I came about ten minutes before you did. She looks the other way. Ten minutes before, but I... I came before ten o'clock, and she came earlier? Why? If you were here before me, why didn't you tell me you were waiting there? I wanted to watch you a while while I was hiding. I see. Even though she doesn't act any different, she must be bothered by what happened last night. That's why... She couldn't face me so directly and was hiding. Sorry. That's right, it's not that simple. Yeah, you never even knew I was here. I was waiting for you to notice. I was planning on meeting in a different way this time, but you ruined it by just spacing out. Eh? Ruined what? Arcaway, you weren't hiding because you felt awkward? Why? I was a little bored, so I wanted to play around. She says it lightly, not even knowing an inkling of the frustration I felt. Hold on a sec. I want to double check. Yeah, okay. Play around with me. You. The joy I felt from meeting her fades away instantly. This should be... I just want to double check to make sure I was... Uh, d d d yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The scene does not what I remember it being. It's not a mood where I have to think about what I should do after seeing her. As usual, she's acting at her own pace without even understanding how I feel. Ha. <laughs> I feel my lungs with a deep breath of night air. I'm less angry than surprised. Maybe I'm just relieved she is acting normally. Well normal for her. As proof, it feels like my heart laden with impurities has just been cleansed anew. Man, you in. Really? 
I thought you were just zoned out. No, not about the hide-and-go-seek. Oh well, it's useless putting it into words. I'm glad you came. To be honest, I thought I'd never see you again. Eh? You thought so after only waiting two hours? That's not it. It's because of last night. I thought we would never meet again. That won't do, Shiki. I said to just forget about it. Arkawade says this weekly. Ah. Uh, idiot. I'm such an idiot. I selfishly thought she was acting completely normal. But I was wrong. She was acting that way so I wouldn't feel bad. Sorry. I was an idiot. I don't have any right to yell at you anymore. I said it's okay. If anyone is to blame, it's me. So just forget about it. Isn't that better for the both of us? She tries to fool us by both spe by s both fool us both by speaking cheerfully. Not it eventually. Fool us about last night. Fool us about how bothered she is. But telling me to forget that expression. How can I forget? No. I wasn't apologizing for last night. I'm an idiot because I can't forget about something I should forget. Uh, Shiki? Since this morning, all I thought about was you. All I could think about was how I should apologize to you and what to say after I saw you. So I can't just forget about it now. Arkaway looks away. I can't look at her either. After sensing I said something I shouldn't have, I can't look into her eyes now. She doesn't respond. I can't either, and the long silence begins. I don't know how long the two of us stood there. Arkaway nods slightly. Yeah, to tell the truth. I couldn't forget about it either, Shiki. Arkaway blushes as she says this with some difficulty. Ar Arkaway. She looks so cute doing that. Bumping the table with my phone because I'm an idiot. As soon as I think that, Arkaway looks around her. I don't know when this happened, but we're surrounded by human shapes. What? I can't think since it was so sudden. We're surrounded. Get ready, Shiki. If you don't fight, you'll just die. Fight? Then they... If you take off your glasses, you'll get it, won't you? They are the dead, without even a finger's worth of normal blood. Finger as in like a human finger, or finger as in a shot? It, I guess it doesn't matter. I quickly take out my knife and take off my glasses. Like she says, the five people surrounding us are just scribbled lines making a human shape. Why? You said you killed them all yesterday, Harkawaid. Yes. These are the ones I destroyed yesterday. She narrows her eyes and glares at them. They advance sluggishly. They were only pretending to be dead. Of course not. I'm not weakened enough to be fooled by such tricks. But the fact that I made a mistake can't be excused. I didn't make sure they dissolved into ashes at the end. Shuffle. They close the circle around us. My fingers grasping the knife trembles a bit. To be blunt, there's no pressure coming from these dead. Compared to a monster like Nero, they're practically nothing. But five of them. Can I fight this many dead, this many things who were once human? Shiki, if you hesitate, you'll die. They are no longer alive. Once they have their blood sucked by a vampire and become the dead, they can no longer return. They are just dolls used by the vampire. There is no sin in killing them. I hear her voice from behind me. It seems she moves to protect my vulnerable back. Wait, what do you mean? 
I mean, there are many ways to magically control a dead body. It's easier to infuse a human corpse with natural, with magical enemies, energy, than animals or intangible objects, so it's very convenient. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go over the details. They're coming. I sense her moving away. At the same time, they attack. The shapes of death attack. They simply fly forward, arms outstretched. I take a huge leap to the side and evade their attack. Then, I sense something terrible behind me. Why, you? I whirl around with all my strength. There, one of the dead is trying to punch me. The dead's body is almost devoid of places without lines, which lets me slice anywhere on its body. What's more, its movements are incredibly sluggish, far easier than anything that came out of Nero. The dead charge me. I can kill them with ease. Evading the swinging arm, I aim for the first one's unprotected lower left abdomen. In the line of blood vessels there, I stare at the heart called its point. Damn it. Thrash. The knife doesn't reach its target, only slicing through its upraised arm. The one arm dead doesn't even pause its attack. The other dead also comes in showing no fear. The one arm dead attacks. Right when I evade that dead, the other dead jumps on me from behind. Up. Grind. From behind, like a piggyback stance. The dead bites on my neck. Not to suck my blood or anything like that. Just like a beast trying to kill its prey by biting its neck off. Go. Can a human mouth bite through a neck? The dead's mouth is shallow. It bites with its front teeth rather than its back. As a result, the te dead's teeth actually break off. Even still, it tries to bite through its my neck with its flat mouth. It doesn't really hurt. It just disgusting. Ah, ah, ah. The one armed dead walks towards me. I have to kill the dead behind me or I'll die. The method is simple. As it tries to continue biting my neck, I can slice my knife through its face. But that means I'm going to kill. I understand. They aren't human, they aren't even living, but I still feel it's wrong. How naive. Even if they are corpses, they have the shapes of humans and they move like them. It still seems mistaken to kill them all, and to kill them as another human being. Shiki. I hear Arkawade's voice as she deals with the other three dead. Without thinking, despite the one in front of me, I look over at her. And... I see something terribly unbelievable. Arkawade is wounded. Even though they move so sluggishly and would only take her a second to kill, Arkawade is being pushed by those dead. She breathes heavily. Her footwork is also unsteady, and she's having difficulty evading those attacks even I can evade. The dead rips into her arm. She counters. She tears the body in two from the head to its waist. Both halves crumble to the ground. At the same time, the other waiting shades of death pounce on her. Up. With a crash, she lands on her knees. I can tell she's breathing wildly from this distance. There, the two dead attack. They kick her kneeling figure in the face and make her collapse on the ground. Stop. After that, they carry a dull, expressionless smile as they get on top of her. Stop. She lies there, arms outspread like a cross. Like when I did those disgraceful things to her last night. Stop it, you fucking bastards. Stab. 
I cut through the face of the one behind me, still trying to bite me. I pierced the lower right abdomen of the one in front of me, which had strangely paws. That's where its death is. Not even looking at it as it crumbles away, I turn around and kill the faceless dead behind me. I run. The ones around her realize I'm coming and get up to attack. No problem. I slice through their points of death as they attack me. After it's all over, I start to catch my breath. The four figures crumble away into ash. The one Arcoate killed earlier makes five. Ah, killed. Without hesitating, I stopped them completely. Ah, ah. I can't think clearly. Probably because regret and self adamnation are screaming at me. My panting fills the air. But it's still good. It's better than her getting hurt. For the first time, with my own free will, with the mind of Tono Shiki, I used these, this power for someone else's sake. I keep panting. I can't seem to fully catch my breath. I can hear slight wheezing mixed in with the wild breathing. Arcoid. Turning around, I see her full of pain and on her knees. Are you okay, Arcoid? I dash towards her. She's curled up as she breathes like someone who can do nothing else. What's wrong? You're covered in sweat. Did your wound open up? I kneel and try to look at her face. She... Key. However, she has a hand covering it. I can't see her face. All I can see is the bloodshot red eyes through her fingers. Her suffering isn't normal. The way she's breathing intermittently isn't normal, or isn't natural. A hungry breath. Bloodshot eyes. Her waving hair. Are chill. Sensing danger, I step back. Yet far faster than my movement is her teeth closing in to suck my blood. Yeah, it's a scene again, more or less. Well, her eyes are a different color. I hear a creaking noise. Her cold hand on my shoulder and her low body temperature is so cold that I hear a creaking, freezing sound. The sound didn't come from anywhere around me. It's just that my body is freezing as the cold penetrates deep inside from where she touches me. In other words, the sound is coming from inside me. My heart, my guts, my brain, they are creaking. Uh, just like a cancerous cell. Rapidly, limitlessly, unordered, and lacking intelligence violating me from inside out. Arr. I can't feel her breath. Like a ravenous beast, she just bites into my neck. At the same time, I descend into a limitless hell of pain as if my nerves were being torn apart one by one. Great. My frying mind manages to utter this last word. It hurts. I T H U R T S. I'm just, I'm just gonna read that out. It hurts so much. It causes me to fade away. The reading it out letter by letter is a symbolic reading wise, but I don't think it sounds as good, you know, reading it aloud. End. And that is. An unmistakable bad end. Probably one of the worst ends for uh, our route, Shiki, at the very least. Yes, we will take Sindil Sensei's lesson. Yeah. Medi, or merci. Now for the hint corner for the poor Tonokun who reached a dead end in the midst of the climax. It's time for Teach Me CL Sensei. 
It would have been better to quit, but this corner is already into the second day. At this rate, we might go until the third day, which makes me feel a little sick. Then, let's begin the first period lesson. Oh, jeez. That's why I told you, Tono-kun. You shouldn't trust Arcoway. No, that's not my fault. It's your fault no matter how you look at it. Yeah. Well then, to the Tono-kun who came here. It's hard to say, but you have to resubmit from quite a while back. Yes, you do. The feelings for you were, that were born inside of Arcoade were unfortunately weaker than her urges as a vampire. Please go back one or two days and try to strengthen your bond with her. Oh yes, and one more thing. Tonokun, even though you were enchanted, I don't think it's a good idea to easily go crazy. It's not my fault. Cheeky, you idiot. Blockhead. Insensitive oaf. And that is, uh, that is that end. Um, I don't think you have to go back one or two days. You just have, oh, well, you have to go back a day, I think. Yeah, you have to go back one single day. Um, to the night before. Um, I'm not sure if that was written with the intention of, uh, do getting getting there by different means but this is the only means that I that you can get to that bad end or at least to that specific one yeah that's the only way to get there damn game and it's lying to me da -da -da, load uh, this one I think uh, over the park before 10 we wait skip still wait skip still wait skip ah so now we're here so, uh, wow, we are actually starting farther along than I thought we would. That's interesting. Arcoade's arms stretch out. Like that, she holds my body. Ar. My breathing stops in my throat as I call her name. Her bloodshot eyes. Her sharp teeth like a beast's. The overwhelming pressure that drains me of any will to resist. The thing with its teeth nearing my neck isn't the woman I know. I can't do anything. I can't even lift a finger. I'm going to be eaten. This is what it means to be preyed upon. Her teeth push against my neck. The only thing filling my mind is fear. He... A shriek comes out. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna attempt that one because I. I don't want to wake up literally everyone in my house. I almost think for an instant how pitiful it is for me to make such a sound. Maybe it's just my imagination, but it feels like she freezes in place. But before I can confirm this, wham! A violent explosion erupts from me, and Arcoade's body is smashed sideways. What? As if she was hit by a car, she was blown back several meters. But she gets up like it was nothing. I... I... Arcoade stands there, stunned. I can't even think what to do, either. And there, you were going to suck his blood. A cold, scolding voice. This is your true nature, Arcoade Brunstad. Bruna stud. A merciless voice towers from above. Hey, Curry Sensei. I look up at the moon. There stands the robe figure from that one night. Sen Pai. There's no mistake. No matter how I look at it, it's CL Sen Senpai. Wanting to call her sensei, she doesn't even look at me, but she glares at Arcoade for crouching, uh, Arcoade crouching far away. Even if I, even if you destroy your kin, you cannot change the fact you are a vampire yourself. I don't know why you drew him close to you, but didn't you think it would end this way? Her voice is completely different from normal, neither strict nor kind. Her emotionless voice is horribly devoid of any humanity. Without making a noise, Senpai descends from the streetlight to the ground. 
Usually, it's nothing I mess with, but I will not overlook you trying to kill an ordinary person. It isn't part of the plan to fight you, but if there is a need, we can settle our score. Don't be ridiculous. I don't want anything to do with you. And she looks at Senpai hatefully. I never intended to kill him. That does not sound convincing at all. It's not like you don't realize what you did earlier and what kind of yell he gave out when he saw you. I don't care if you hate me, but you took your insanity and directed it at him. Now, shall we ask him how he felt? With a turn of her head, Senpai casts a glance at me for the first time. Arcoade averts her gaze painfully. Silence fills the park. A footstep. The robed senpai takes only one step towards me. Get back, vampire. You have no right to stay by his side from the beginning. What? That's not true. I don't know who senpai is or what happened to Arcoid earlier, but I can at least declare this. Because I myself want to be by her side. You're wrong. What's with you, coming out of nowhere, wearing weird clothes, and speaking up like you understand everything? Arkwade is definitely a vampire, but she hasn't even drunk blood even once. That was probably just a joke, and you don't have any right to. Please be quiet, Honokun. She hasn't drank blood even once. Yes, certainly these past 800 years, there's no record of her having any victims. However... Just shut up. I don't even care to listen to whatever strange stories you have to say. Look, if you try to get in her way, I'll not forgive even you. After all, I, I'm helping her because I want to. It's none of your business to interfere. Tono-kun, you... An inkling of emotion enters her voice. I understand. If you say so, then I won't do anything else. However, Senpai changes her gaze to Arcoade. Arcoade looks away, not at me or Senpai. As he said, Arcoade Brunestud, do you still intend to be by his side after this? Arcoade doesn't answer. She raises her head to look at me once and then runs off into the night. Why are you leaving, Arcoade? I start to run after her, but my feet don't leave the ground. Senpai walks slowly over to me. I won't let you follow her. I can't let you be killed, Tonokun. In her hands are thin, rod-like blades. One of them stands by my feet, pinning my shadow to the ground. You cannot move until that is removed. No matter how hard you struggle, your shadow will just as hard or will struggle just as hard not to separate from you. Stop fooling around, I'll lose her. I grip the blade below me. But no matter what, I can't pull it out. I forgot to mention this, but I'm the only one who can remove it, so please give up. Saying that, she stops in front of me. I glare at her. She takes in my gaze, then sighs. Jeez, really, why do you go overboard so much, Tono-kun? Eh? Um, senpai? I know. I don't hate her myself, but this is for both of your sakes. I will let you go, so please listen to what I have to say for a while. She looks up hesitantly, hesitantly. This is the leisurely senpai I know from school. Is that why, even though I still can't grasp the situation, I start to calm down? And I think this, ladies and gentlemen, is where we're going to end off this episode. Ciel has revealed herself to us. Uh, not in that way, not in this route anyway. Haha, <laughs> haha, <laughs> sex joke. Um, but, well, we've learned a bit more about her. She, well, we now know for sure, for a fact, 
that that was CL that we first met whenever we were saved from Nero, or was it the other one? I think it was the bandage man she saved us from, actually, not Nero. Um, but anyway, she's going to talk to us. She wants to have a conversation. But what does she want to talk about? What information does she have that could interest us other than a recipe for the greatest curry of all time? Which I'm sure she has because she's her. But anyway, I hope to see you all next time.